fact that you're bobbing your head is probably a good good thing. Now, bonus points if you know what eighty late eighties movie this is from. Oh no, shot! There. It's an it's an action movie. I got nothing. All right, we'll, we'll we'll see if any of our people, Jay or Nolan, you know, know what this is. You know, Jay Jay is pretty savvy. He's he's uh, an experienced gentleman. I'll put it that way. He's been he's been to school before. <laughs> Welcome to the Fighting Irish Faithful Show, powered by Scotch Spreadsheets and proudly part of Dos Leprechauns Media. Thank you for joining us very, very early, normally much, much earlier, three and a half hours earlier than what we normally do on Tuesday nights. Uh, Football is starting this Saturday. Um, I'm sure Notre Dame fans are actually slightly interested in the... the, Do you know where the first college football game is, Matt? No. No. Well, maybe I should first introduce you. Uh, Everyone, this is my friend Matt. Hello. Say hi. Hey, everyone. (laughs) <laughs> and are you on X? Uh, yes, but I'm currently on a break for St. Michael's Lent. Oh, that's right. Okay. So so here's some background here. So Matt and I are friends. Mm-hmm. You have children. I have children. And we hang out occasionally a couple times a month-ish. And we have a, a family group. We get together. We celebrate. Eat. Pray. Whatever. Right? Yeah. But it's been a fun conversation. So... So the, the synthesis of tonight's show was not that I'm looking for content. It was your children, you had a child that was baptized and received first communion on the same day. Yeah, uh, the, the oldest received her first little communion and the youngest was baptized. Excellent. And so so we, thank you for inviting us. It was it was wonderful. Thank you for coming. Yeah, the, the, the food was great at your home. And but then we went out on the back porch and the men were smoking cigars and drinking bourbon and of course sports and other masculine things came up, right? Yes. <laughs> but you and I were having a very engaging conversation that other people were just like, Huh? What? <laughs> and it involved Notre Dame, Catholicism, football, and I was like, This would be really I think interesting for a show. I, I don't know. M- maybe you're just I don't know, but but y- you had a lot of intelligent, good things to say, and what I thought was interesting is, so you're a practicing Catholic. Yes. You like football. Of course. You're from Indiana. Born and raised. You love the Midwest. Absolutely. And you really don't know much about Notre Dame at all. Practically zilch. <laughs> Which blew my mind, and I think uh, the, the members of the show... Are, are like going what how is that possible you know like nolan i think is 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 i don't actually don't even know where nolan is and jay jay lives in texas but has been all over the country because of his his career and um so i was like oh well we should get matt on here and so like part of me secretly wants to uh, it's not a secret anymore because i'm about to tell you but i i want to like make you a notre dame fan but I can't make you do anything, quite frankly, because you have free will and you're an American. So <laughs> it's true. <laughs> true on both accounts. <laughs> However, I am definitely open to it. Um, I recently became a Cincinnati Reds fan. I didn't think I would be watching any new sports. Okay. I mean, I can. It falls in the same. Everything falls together. How are the, the Reds doing right now? I actually have no. Oh, idea. terrible. Are they doing it's, terrible? Oh yeah. Okay. It's a, it's we been a very disappointing season. I don't want us to turn into the, a, a Reds podcast. Although oh, we we have trust talked me, you about, don't. You really don't want we to. Really don't. <laughs> Everyone just let me tell you another thing about the manager. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our bullpen's <laughs> trash. Yeah, I don't know. At any rate, though, I becoming a fan of the Reds later in life. I didn't grow up watching baseball. Um, is more like a. I started watching the Reds and learning more about baseball. My wife, she thinks baseball is great. She'd rather watch that than any other sport. Okay. But America's pastime. It made me realize that I can be open to possibly getting into college football, something that I don't currently watch. Interesting. Okay. Now, now you do watch the NFL. Yes. Religiously. Religiously. Like, did you subscribe to, what is it? Like red zone or do, is that still a thing i don't know no there are other uh manners by which i you have other I get, manners yes. <laughs> in which we, we don't need to discuss those here i mean we clearly were we're using um uh, yeah we don't need to get into copyright discussions tonight but we but okay so so and, and who is your team the cincinnati Bengals. the Bengals. excellent so so you so w- why cincinnati because you just mentioned the reds and you just mm-hmm. mentioned the Bengals. yeah so obviously i was born in indiana um, everyone in my family is a Colts fan. Everyone around me is a Colts fan. But when I was growing up, like five, six years old, I was a huge Tiger kid. I love Tigers. Okay. 
found out that there was a tiger team. I'm like, oh, that's super cool. I'm going to like the tiger team. And then one day I was at my great grandfather's house and I walk into this extra room he has and the walls are just covered in Bengals memorabilia. And I'm like, what is this? How did you, this was your grandfather, my great grandfather, great grandfather. So I talked with him a little bit and then my, my grandmother and found out they were both diehard Bengals fans since 1968 when the team first started. Wow. Because the Colts weren't here. The Colts didn't get here to think like mid eighties. So yeah, when it, I don't, I don't know the whole story, but yeah. Okay. So they were, they were big Bengals fans and that I'm like, okay, so I like tigers and I love my family. So this just, this just works to this me. This actually works. totally makes sense. And, and you are all decked out in bright orange and black. Tonight. Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, the weather was, a little on the cooler side today. It is a little cooler. And you football know, is in the air. Oh yeah. So I'm wearing a, a definitely too warm uh, for the weather flannel right now. <laughs> but it's it's my black pants. and orange flannel and corduroy <laughs> pants to just because I want to bring on football season. Yeah, that, that's right. You are willing it into. I, I did that by going to the liquor store and getting another <laughs> scotch. Well, I okay. Full disclosure, we had some nice stuff, but I was just like, eh, you know, which you're t- totally in- encouraged to but at the same time it's like eh, you know that's like like i'll save that for like a like a good victory or something right, to that effect right. right so we went with johnny walker black tonight um and sometimes it's volume not you know quality can i put it yep uh, yeah i get yeah. that uh, quantity not quality that's mm-hmm, what i'm trying mm-hmm. to get well we got people here um people can like try to convert matt over i guess if we want <laughs> Um, we have someone here named Jimmy Joe, who, who I think is a recent Notre Dame fan. I, I think he can, he can relate, uh, to you. Um, although, although I don't think you would clearly at this point label yourself as a Notre Dame fan. Um, but maybe if you hang around with us and you listen to this podcast more, maybe we can bring it and we'll discuss a little bit of that, that tonight. Uh, Jimmy Joe, I see that you're there. Welcome back, Jimmy Joe. I see you're on mute. Hit the pink button in the lower left-hand corner. Oh, I forgot how to do the button. Okay, I got it. Can you hear me? Jimmy Joe, welcome back to the show. What's up, Jimmy? Well, I'd like to talk about the Bengal, you know, Bengal tiger is an Indian. That, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have to... I won't say what I want. Go ahead, Jimmy Joe. Sorry. Those are in danger, you know. We can't have them as pets. No, no. Unfortunately, Although, I would love to have a tiger as a pet, but I understand that they are better off in the the wild or on on reserves. I think the missus might object to having a certain wild cat. In, That's possible. In she doesn't even like the dog we have. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Jimmy Joe, it's been a long time since you've been on the show. We, we welcome you back with great, great joy, but we are saddened you will not be joining us in October for the Stanford Gathering. I have a retreat I'm going to. I'm going to learn to be a better holy man. Oh, okay. That's good. All right. Well, enjoy your retreat. Do you, um, as uh, you have mentioned before that, that you are kind of a recent new addition per se to the Notre Dame subway domers, if I may say so, um, what, what sort of feedback would you give to, to my friend Matt here to say, Hey, Notre Dame is, is worthwhile as a college football team. I have to tell you, you know, I have my good friend Rami who is an engineering student at Notre Dame, and he told me when I came here, he says, oh, if you are an American and you'll become a Catholic, you go for the Notre Dame uh, people because they're Catholic people. Okay, so and, so America, okay. American, Catholic, Catholic Notre, Dame, Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Catholic, Catholic, American, got it. Yeah, well, and that that seems true because, like, definitely, like, like all, all other than the, the Coast Guard and the Space Force, but like all the other services have basically ROTC there. They have their own building at Notre Dame. There's a history of um, the Naval, like Notre Dame plays the Naval Academy every year. Okay. Okay. And that goes back to a tradition from World War II where Notre Dame was going to shut down because at that point it was an all men's college. And that uh notre dame was going to shut down because of whatnot but the the navy sent their uh the the cadets at annapolis over to notre dame to like like study or whatever and and essentially navy saved notre dame from closing as a as a school 
Okay. And because of that, that like thanks or, you know, whatnot to Navy, Notre Dame plays Navy every year as kind of like this traditional thing. And so what's interesting is like you think of like sports teams or rivals or and Notre, Navy is pseudo a rival only just because we play them every year. Although even if you look at win percentages and whatnot, it's clearly not. But Navy every now and then you know, gets a victory, especially during the Charlie Weiss and Brian Kelly years, that was a little more frequent than we would like. But what's really interesting is post game, like both teams will like gather around behind the other team in support of their, like singing the alma maters and things of that nature. So there's this mutual respect that is very unique to Notre Dame and Navy uh, after they go and, you know, beat each other up and, you know, they cut block us, you know, on, on the football field. So that's really cool. It is cool. Yeah. Well, that is so good. I have a nice surprise for us. Is Dr. Abby on? Uh, I do not see Dr. Abby yet. Our chief of staff of the podcast. She is not on right now. She might be getting off work or whatnot, but um, yeah, this is an uncharacteristic time. So I see CJ and Mark with glasses, a few other people that we don't traditionally see at this hour. Cause most people are getting on even Jay. He sometimes gets on a little much later, but yeah. Jimmy Joe, any other further questions from Matt? I've got a whole laundry list of things to try to encourage him to uh, become a Notre Dame fan. <laughs> oh, Matt, you have to be a Notre Dame fan. Have you ever been to the school? Nope, never. Oh, it is like going to a slice of heaven. It's so beautiful. It's very pretty. It is is very nice. It's, it's I don't know what the budget is on grounds, but I don't think it has a limit. You know, <laughs> it's very, <laughs> that might be half the budget for all. I don't know. It's, it's, it's very nice. So I think they have a leaf patrol there. You know, you don't even see tr- leaves on trees on the ground. <laughs> oh my. Well, they, they leave them there purposely, pun intended. They leave them there pur- purposely in the fall. So you get that like leaf strong autumn you know oh right very know. aesthetic yes that's right yeah which is another reason why we're going to the stanford game because stanford notre dame plays two games in the fall mid-october when you know the leaves are doing its thing it's it's chilly but it's not like freezing cold you know whatever um every other year it splits between a california team this year it's stanford and then in the the other year it is the odd years it is usc okay which USC is actually our rival, um, Notre Dame's rival, which is odd, which we can talk about later. So, Jimmy Joe, are you playing an accordion or something? What am I hearing? Oh, I guess this is a surprise. I took the good old accordion now. I used to play, and I, I started learning again. Indian people play the accordion. I have not heard of that. Oh, yes. Oh, they yes. don't have the polka there, but that makes sense. I thought the accordion is more Polish. Oh, yeah. Right, exactly. Or Weird Al Yankovic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy so, Joe, can you play the Notre Dame fight song on the accordion? Well, I've been learning it. Let me help you. <gasps> okay, let me... okay, here we go. Oh, I never hear. Okay. Oh, no. Hold on. Okay, here we I think we found a new theme for the podcast. Wow! (laughs) That was awesome! Yeah! I was thinking about the Navy, you know, and you, you know they, saved, you know they saved Notre Dame. That's right, that's right. Yeah, we touched on that earlier. Well, Jimmy Joe, I really appreciate you playing the accordion, playing the fight song. That was cool. Um, and we're, you're kind of helping set the stage with Matt here about you know the excellence that oh, this Matt, is. So it's so nice. The Notre Dame is beautiful. Yes. Jimmy Joe, I really appreciate it. Nolan is going off the hook. He just pounding the heart and the hundred percent button and thumbs up and claps and you know, every emoji right. under the sun that's positive. Okay. He's Oh Namaste, Namaste everybody. <laughs> namaste, namaste, Jimmy Joe. Namaste. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> so how does it make you feel that the first official time I get to hear the Notre Dame fight song was on this podcast via accordion via via by i think jimmy Man. joe lives in the, in idaho actually okay he, oh, you don't know the whole story but yeah it's a long story with him but yeah that doesn't sound good all right mom's okay. outside the studio <laughs> that sounds like one of your technicians took a tumble one of my technicians took a tumble yeah no, he's more like an intern you know? mm, <laughs> yeah we don't pay them that's you know? better yeah. <laughs> that's right oh that doesn't sound good at all <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, this is what happens when you podcast at 6 o'clock in the evening rather than 9.30 when the children are in bed. Anyway, excuse me, the technicians mm-hmm. are in bed. All right, so so you've never actually heard the Notre Dame fight song? It sounded familiar. I'm sure I've heard it. It sounded passing, familiar. Okay. But I don't think I've ever like been like, okay, this, oh, what I'm hearing is Notre Dame fight song. What it was just like hell? generic college This is music. so foreign to me. I don't know. Like maybe because I was draped in Notre Dame, you know, shamrock, whatever you know after baptism maybe i should have gotten your kids different gifts for their uh <laughs> you know <laughs> okay well here shit you know i mean this has to sound kind of from a- have you seen the movie airplane we'll, we'll let this play that's that's fine i don't know if people on the podcast can hear it we can clearly hear it really well it's probably really faint for our- It's up there. It's on the wall here. You don't need to hear me sing. That's not why you're here, but we'll we'll let this play in the background, but yeah. Jimmy Joe did not get on me. We'll let we'll turn this up so that people can hear. That that's the meat and potatoes of the fight okay. song. But anyway, so what what's interesting? So so this is something I was doing during research because because I knew we'd have this conversation. Um, I knew that that you didn't have a full understanding of of Notre Dame from a. Um, I, I I was thinking of like like Catholic stuff, positives, and then some like negative stuff, just to like kind of whatever that like you know perceptions that, that people may have in Notre Dame. But you know it is what it is. But what I was curious one of the biggest things that was positive that i remember and which is fairly recent i found this out actually from the indie star someone told me about it at work and i was like huh and and like for me like so notre dame's mascot is the fighting irish right okay now do you know what notre dame actually stands for or or what it, it is translated and what it's translated from no i don't and i feel as a catholic okay. more ashamed of not actually no 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 it's fine this. no it's fine no this is great no it's I, i'm not trying to embarrass you so <laughs> here all right what, what people are not seeing is i'm i just typed into google images notre dame golden dome who's on the top of the dome uh presumably our lady right that's our lady now let me do this should have done translate french to english i'm typing in notre dame our lady there you go that's what notre dame stands for that's pretty cool french for our lady so when you hear our lady's university it's notre dame now i was doing a little more research into some of the other stuff today and this stuff i kind of knew but i needed a reminder um Notre Dame was founded by a group of French priests who came over. I think it was one priest and multiple brothers, something like I may have the numbers wrong. But um, a gentleman, a, a priest by the name of Father Edward Soren, who got like a land grant and something to uh, originally establish a mission in 1842 in northern Indiana. Now, why he decided on northern Indiana is beyond me. Uh, but that being said... Um, in 1842 is when Notre Dame was founded. 
um, which actually, and I think the official name is Notre Dame du Lac, which means Our Lady of the Lake, because there's two lakes nearby, the okay. St. Joseph's Lake and the St. Mary's Lake. All right. Um, but he also, in addition to founding the mission and, and spreading the gospel of within the local native population, he had a vision for a great American Catholic university in the tradition of great medieval universities of, of Europe. Right. Mm -hmm. What, and, and so, and what's interesting is in like the sixties and the seventies when Notre Dame quote unquote really grew. And I think a little of that is tied with the success of the football team under coach Eric Parsegian. Uh, and Dan Devine and, and, you know, eventually into the Holtz era, um, Notre, Notre Dame grew from like endowment buildings, you know, and academics and selective being, being a much more selective university. Um, it's, and obviously people know of Notre Dame as a hard, rigorous university, um, you know, and, you know, it's the one place in school that made me cry, you know, cause it was hard <laughs> as hell. Um, to which I got some tough love from the doc here. The doc's my wife, by the way. Um, we protect her identity, but yeah. You know. <laughs> but she is re officially referred to as the doc on this show. But um, but what's interesting is how Notre Dame holds fast to that tradition of trying to be this excellent, great university that is is modeling, you know, this this image of of academic excellence and just excellence. Period. Right, and it helps when historically Notre Dame has had a really good football team. Um, now getting back to the present, you know, we're a little far from that. We don't have to go down too far down the negative rabbit hole. Maybe we'll do that later, a little bit later, but what's, what's really, what's really great is that, that when you translate Notre Dame, it is, it was founded by, by Catholic missionaries, literally um, under the guise of then, okay, then we're going to establish this, this university. And so Notre Dame does fall in line, maybe not like, Officially, if you do with like U.S. news rankings, like, OK, Yale, Harvard, Princeton, you know, whatever, Stanford, you know, but Notre Dame is is up there in that upper elite ish thing, which may be part of their problem that they they're kind of snobby ish, you know, like, <laughs> like, uh, like, I, like, and I talk to coworkers, you know, and I, I work with a lot of Purdue people. I imagine you work with some Purdue people, um, Rose Holman, people here in the Midwest who know what that is. Um the Rose Holman people don't really have an issue. The Purdue people hate Notre Dame. I really yes. don't know why. And I've even asked some Purdue people, like, why do you hate Notre Dame so much? And they say, I, I can't explain it to you. And it's like, <laughs> that makes me think you actually don't have a reason. You've just been indoctrinated and you believe something, but you don't really understand why you believe it or why you, why you should believe it that way. You know, like, mm -hmm. so, you know, it's, you know, I can make a bunch of snide comments right now, but I won't. Because uh, <laughs> let's try to just stay on task with football so <laughs> the irony too of the purdue people you're talking about are largely are engineers data-driven right. people so you ask them what's the data behind their yeah their opinion and it's like oh, well. it would take too long to explain okay i got some time <laughs> crickets you yep. know where's my cricket soundtrack cool cool all right so other cool things which i'm, I'm trying to appeal to your catholic side well, something and then... something i should point out real quick you oh. mentioned it was founded by french missionaries yes my last name is French, actually. Okay, right to, on. I was able to trace it back to uh, my, you know, great, 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 great grandfather came over in the. I Did I say, get it right? Five grades. <laughs> maybe <laughs> I'd have to count it, but he came over in the uh, the sixteen thirties or forties. It was after, yeah, it was very early. On. It wasn't quite on the Mayflower, and we checked my wife. She actually, uh, her family also beat us by like. 10 years but okay came in um and made their way into indiana and kentucky over time a couple of them went further south but there is a french american connection there that i had not actually put together until you mentioned notre dame is french for our lady uh, that's awesome that's cool well okay so clearly your your family has been here longer than mine <laughs> most <laughs> well, that, of my, that, that's most my, of my dad's family side. came around the world war ii which which like a lot of people did but um Okay, that's cool. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah, so so we already mentioned that Mary's on the Golden Dome, right, which is the main building at Notre Dame, Okay. Um, which is, you know, where administration is, um, um, you know, finance and the provost office and admissions and, you know, this, that, and the other, all the, like, the big things at a university you would expect. Next door to that is a basilica, 
not 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 the church not a cathedral it is a basilica right so it's a special place to exercise the sacraments right and i believe john paul ii uh, officially made that a basilica oh neat as well back i think it was the late 80s or early 90s. I, mm-hmm. I i have that wrong but you know you can you can look it up yourself so there is a basilica there and it is absolutely beautiful and the basilica is my favorite place on campus by far you know um, a lot of other people will say that the, there's a grotto here. We'll pull up, we're pulling up images for, uh, for Matt here on, uh, why do we have my email up? We don't need that. Um, let's see. Notre Dame grotto, the grotto of our lady of Lords. So it's not, it's clearly not Lords. It's not as big as Lords, but, um, have you seen the movie Rudy? No. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So, so uh, I mean, the, you would have seen it in the movie. They actually, the, the, there's a little bit of the basilica. You don't really see the dome, which is interesting in the movie. I don't really know why, because that's probably visibly one of the more iconic images of the university, clearly. Um, but the grotto is uh, um, in representation of of uh, Saint Bernadette and our and Our Lady of Lords. Right. And that's kind of how it is. You can light a candle, you know, and it's always crowded on game day, which is great. Um, let's go back to Joe's spreadsheet here. Other things uh, I want to talk about other Catholics. So we got the Basilica. Mary's on the Golden Dome, the Grotto of Our Lady of Lords, uh, the Word of Life mural. Do you know what that is? Even some nope. of our, our regulars may not know what the Word of Life mural is. Have you heard of Touchdown Jesus? No. No. OK, well, maybe you've seen this. OK. The Word of Life mural, images. Well, that's not it. It's that. Have you not seen this? Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> not in person. Yeah. There's a yes, reflecting I... pond in front. So mm-hmm. that's actually Notre Dame's library. It was built, I think, oh, wow. in the 60s. Um, and so so the it's called the Word of Life. And I was reading, there's actually a Wikipedia article, article about this. So it's a, it's a beautiful mosaic. It's really tall. It's like 14 stories tall. It's very large. Um, it's one of the largest buildings on campus, other than the Basilica and the, the Dome, the main building. Um, and because of Christ is is the teacher, right? The word of God, the gospel, right? Um, so he's the... I, I'm probably going to mess this up from from what the official word is from Notre Dame, but, but Christ is the ultimate teacher for how we should live our lives, obviously. Um, and so the, the wealth of knowledge that flows from Christ is symbolic of the knowledge that's in the library with all the books and everything else inside. Right. right. So, so that's, you know, some, some symbolism there. I refuse to use the word symbology. Right. <laughs> um, a couple of other, other things um, of reminding of our, our Catholic Christian faith is uh, Moses around the corner um, is an, is a statue of Moses. Now what's funny is he's kind of looking over his shoulder and got a like a hand in the air, but he he's really he's holding the Ten Commandments and he's pointing up, like pointing to God, like you know, pay attention mm-hmm. to our Lord. But he's also referred to as First Down Moses because he's got a finger up in the air. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like uh, and then not at all related to football, but um, there's an area where there's uh, a, I think a couple of statues of of Christ with the woman woman at the well. Okay, okay, um, so so there's multiple. Why do I say that? Um, Notre Dame is clearly unashamedly a Catholic university. There's mm-hmm. all these this imagery that we've just talked about. Um, there's there's statues, there's murals, there's there's grottos that symbolize places in Lourdes where multiple miracles have occurred. Right now, I don't know how many miracles have occurred at Notre Dame. I mean, we could talk about miracles on the football field. You know, it's like <laughs> how the hell did you know that happen? You know, like you know, but. Um, Stuff like that, but um, you know, there's priests on campus. You know, there is a there's a, there's a seminary, uh, the Moreau Sem- Seminary, there, right, where where young men are in formation to become priests or brothers. Um, every dorm has a chapel with the Blessed Sacrament in it. Uh, every classroom has a crucifix in it, right? To which which was funny as a as a as a cradle Catholic who went to Notre Dame and went to grad school there. And grad school is interesting because you're you're kind of a ghost and it's also a little bit more like a job. But I will say this, you get a, a more a much more diagonal slice of people from all walks of life, 
right, who go there for the academics, which may be one of the negative, quote unquote, things about Notre Dame, that like not everyone that goes there is Catholic, but maybe that's actually a good thing because we're also bringing people in and at least exposing them to this. But, you know, that that's a whole other we can have a whole other conversation. That's another podcast about apologetics and, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know conversion. The balance. You know. Right. Yeah. So, but anyway, um, people who are not Catholic or even Christian and they walk into a classroom and they, they, they go, they look at the crucifix and they have no idea what they're looking at. Right. And so like, huh, what, you know, like, so, so that was, that was odd for me as, as a cradle Catholic to encounter people who didn't even know what a crucifix was. I'm like, do you even know where you are? Like, <laughs> like, why did you come to Notre Dame? You could have gone to a, a, tons of other universities that have no affiliation at all with Catholicism. And then you chose to come here, which is, you know, kind of, kind of funny, but yeah. Um, um, single sex dorms, men's dorms and women's dorms separate. Um, it will definitely always be that way. And there's a sense of tradition now with that, which is kind of fun. Um, um, and then of course the university president is a priest of, of the Holy cross. Um, and there's also a Knights of Columbus council on campus, it's actually oh, cool. an older council, Council 1477. That was uh, something I also thought of. So so all sorts of things that I think, and, and what's really great about that, and, and I think this would be much more, um, obviously I was a grad student there, but not an undergrad. If you were an undergrad student, you know, you're living on campus, it's a, it's a very sheltered place. If, when you go, because I know you will at some point, because <laughs> after the show, you're going to be like all, you know, ready to be decked out in blue, gold, and, and green, and and uh, cheering for the Fighting Irish, but you you get on campus there, and, it, and it's it's a very um, sheltered place. You know, you're in mother's womb. It's a cocoon, right? And and so there's there's all sorts of resources afforded to you. Um, but certainly, as a practicing Catholic, it's definitely a place that will, I think, uh, foster your faith, especially with there being a basilica there, right? right? So so it's it's very um, which as a grad student, I, you I didn't really wasn't able to embrace, but I also went to Gonzaga, which has a much better basketball team. So, you know, it is, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> so, well, let's see if we can get to some other people. If anyone else wants to, wants to say anything or, or try to let's bring a, well, we'll come back to Wookie. We'll get, uh, let's see, CJ, let's bring Nolan on Nolan. We're going to invite you to speak. Cause obviously you're, you're a hardcore Notre Dame. Um, and we can try to try to, um, have have this conversation with Matt here about why he should cheer for the Fighting Irish. We've kind of stayed more on the, the the high level macro Notre Dame, like what the mission is, social justice, and being this place of excellence, academic excellence, and and being and that's something else. Um, are you aware that Notre Dame's football games are on uh, NBC over 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 the air? not on ESPN every Saturday, all their home games. So since I think the 95, 94, I, I probably have the year wrong. I think it's 95. Um, NBC has premiered every home game at Notre Dame. Now, lately with streaming services, they started putting it on Peacock, which pisses off the, you know, the the old guard of Notre Dame fans. But <laughs> uh, for me, I'm actually going to take advantage of that because our to get – NBC in our neighborhood is trash because of the woods nearby. Right. But that being said, um, because of Notre Dame's success and because of their wide reach of Notre Dame fans across the country, they knew that this could be profitable for them and for Notre Dame to broadcast all home games on NBC since the mid nineties. And it's been that way ever since. Okay. Which is kind of fun. That's really cool. It is cool. Yeah. And so, um, so it didn't matter where you could always watch a home Notre Dame game. And, and so for someone like me who grew up with it, it was like, you know, "Eh, great. Let's watch Notre Dame. We know what channel it is. You know, in LA, it was channel four, you know, here in Indianapolis is channel 13. You know, I don't know what it is for, you know, everyone else across country, but all right. Nolan's listening. Um, Irish JTL, you there bring Jason on. Jason's from Iowa. He's I don't know if he's listening in his basement. Maybe he's driving home from work because this is a significantly earlier time or I'm entering up interrupting his dinner here. But Irish JTL, Jason, come back to me. Got some comments here. Let's see if we can read those. Nolan says, can't speak right now. Move on to next. I'll speak in a bit. All right, no problem. Here. Wookie says that Jimmy Joe is awesome. And Space Force with some laughing stuff. I know. I don't know what the Space Force does. It's kind of funny. But (laughs) I don't think Space Force has an ROTC program. But if they did, I guarantee you it would be at Notre Dame. I I, I don't think Notre Dame would hesitate at all with that. 
So, um, some other macro stuff. This is kind of more a fun, fun tidbits, and just because you know I studied aerospace engineering, you learn these things. Um, so one of Notre Dame's presidents, uh, Father Ted Hesburgh, who actually the library is is named after the Hesburgh Library. Um, he was the president of the university for, I don't know, 30, 40 years, something like that. But under his uh, guidance, um, Notre Dame really grew for, to be this real academic po uh, powerhouse. Um, but he also, he did a bunch of other like like things on the side that probably most people don't even know about. And we clearly won't know. But he was very well connected. I'll just put it that way. To which um, there's a story that he is the only civilian, non-military person to ride in an SR-71 Blackbird spy plane that goes supersonic. Oh, wow. Yes. I don't know the circumstances of how, why, or he was able to manage this, but somehow, and I think it was clearly during the Reagan administration, like this just like speaks to me, that, that he had done something that had helped the United States or somebody in some way. And not that I see Father Hesburgh as someone who like, Oh, we're gonna owe you a favor because I, I don't, I don't see if Father Hesburgh that way. <laughs> He's passed away now, but so God only knows. That being said, though, he actually got he had to go through the basic training to be able to survive, you know, you know, supersonic flight or whatever. But some guy in his sixties or whatever it was <laughs> managed to go into an SR seventy one Blackbird, go supersonic, <laughs> go up there and come back down. And so, yeah, <laughs> there, there's a story about that. So. Jason, I see it. You're on mute. Welcome to the show. And we got Matt here in studio who we're, he's got a, a, a smile that's growing as we talk more about Notre Dame. And we haven't even talked about football yet. What's up, Matt? How you doing, Joe? What's up, Jason? Hey, Jason. So we're, we're just converting Matt to be an Irish fan tonight. Is that what we're doing? I, I think we, the, I see that the window in, in the door is cracked and I think we can, we can bust in. So, so yeah. I need right. I need you to to lay on. L let me put it this way, Jason. What, Jason? You live in Iowa. Yep. You are a season ticket holder at Notre Dame, and so you drive from Iowa to Northern Indiana. That is correct. So, what about your fandom, and what about the University of Notre Dame, or even the football program? It can't be because you like gold and blue. Why now, do you, so, why do you do this? Um, when I was probably about four, I had a babysitter, and her son was lucky enough to be a kid whose family could buy him shit, and uh, he had the Pee Wee Oklahoma uniform and the Notre Dame one, and he always made me be Notre Dame, okay. and so that gold that gold helmet, <clears throat> a gold helmet was awesome when I was four years old. So I became a fan in about 83. I got to see some good stuff that I remember. I remember um, the 85 squad. I remember Tim Brown winning the Heisman. I remember the last Natty. I remember the one in 93 that should have been. So I don't know. I've, I've just always, the first time I ever went to campus, I just, realized how amazed I was and what it meant to me to go in that stadium and see the sun hitting the dome and standing from the lake, looking over into the grotto. And what really, I mean, I love college football. And when I started wearing my Notre Dame gear, my family who are all Hawkeye fans hate Notre Dame. So <laughs> as a five-year-old, I was, being, you know, shit talked by my grandparents and my aunts and uncles. So that only that only made the the love stronger and the hate for the Hawkeyes stronger. <laughs> but when I take new people there, when I take new people, I took a buddy to uh, the second home game last year. I don't remember who we played anymore. Oh, um, this is where, what is why I have a spreadsheet to help you out. But continue. Yeah, he. We, we went down the North Tunnel and he like got chills and started tearing up being there and he doesn't give a shit about Notre Dame. I mean, wow. he was there along for the ride to see the campus and we of course went everywhere, but 
the the feeling of walking on that campus and now especially as I'm older realizing how lucky I was to become a Notre Dame fan and not an Iowa Hawkeyes fan and all of the people that we meet like you were talking about the diversity all slices of life from everywhere and I Matt just so you know I'm not a practicing Catholic I actually am atheist but the Basilica is probably my second favorite place on campus. I enjoy being inside the stadium the most, but the Basilica is just, it's amazing. I won't even swear when describing it because it's its just that amazing when you walk in there. The grotto is cool to see. Obviously, I don't partake, but I like looking at it and understanding what it means to so many people. And the fact that all of us for the most part, there's some infighting, but the fact that all of us are accepted and have this common love of the Irish, and honestly, when when you get to a game, you'll see how different us fans are. We, you walk up to our tailgates, and we're we're polite, and we invite you in, and we're not spitting on old ladies like the the Ohio State fans, and we're not complete assholes like bc and all of that all of that just makes it it's the most unique place in college football to me it it just it's the most unique that there is the independent we were the ones that stayed independent in the 80s when everybody else kind of had stayed talked about and being a private school with an admission of what do we do 13k and we're in here competing with schools that have enrollments of 60 and 70,000 people and we're doing it with the highest of academic standards right and integrity and you know grit and grind on the field Jason is it, my, is it safe to say that Notre Dame kind of shoots for the moon in the sense that like we want we want to achieve excellence in the classroom. We want to achieve excellence in on on the playing field or and, and across all, you know, academics or athletics, excuse me. You know, um, you know, I mean, y- you got Olympians who are winning medals, you know, in Fr- in France here. Um, you know, and then you had, you know, the Notre Dame's men's lacrosse team the last two years has won national champions two years in a row, which is dope. Um, you know, and there's the, the history, but, but one thing, and this is something I did want to talk, mention and, and Jason's kind of teed me up here was the fact that it is a welcoming place, which is interesting. Um, I, I haven't been to too many other visiting. I, I, let me, let me rephrase that. I haven't been too much of a visitor at other schools, but what is interesting is how, and maybe this is sometimes a, a negative at Notre Dame, but it is a friendly place for visitors, people who are wearing their colors proudly for said school that they're supporting. They are not treated like garbage when they come to Notre Dame. They're treated with dignity and respect, and I think that's a good thing overall. Now, on the football field, I want to pound the other team, obviously, <laughs> and I, I think Jason and most other people would agree with that. But I think that's what makes Notre Dame very unique And it's not because we're weak. It's like, no, like, like when I go to games, I see parents bringing their little kids. I see, you know, like Dom, you know, him and Meg, they'll bring the boys, you Mm -hmm. know, when they're little, you know, Leo's went to multiple games, you know, as a, as a little guy. Um, I personally don't want to do that with my kids, but, but, um, at the same time, it, they try to make it family friendly ish, um, which is interesting. Now, I think that's a parental decision of whether you want to do that. Um, but I, I find that Notre Dame is unique in the sense that like, like pick any of these other colleges, you know, like, like, like LSU is really you know, like well known. Those fans are assholes. They are nuts. Um, Boston college fans, Chestnut Hill, hostile as hell to Notre Dame fans. We'd already talked about how Purdue fans are, you know, sick in the head and don't know what they're saying, but they hate Notre Dame, you know, and I'm going to go to the Purdue game this year at Ross aid this year. So, you know, we'll see what happens there. Um, not taking the kids. Hey, I'm going, I'm going to, you're I'm going, going to, right. let's make sure we, yep. Let's make sure we right. meet up. Well, I think Nolan's coming up to hang out too. Okay. Brilliant. We'll, 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 I don't remember what section I'm in, but yeah, we're, uh, um, that, that was, that was the one bit of tickets I actually acquired through my alumni lottery. But, um, 
I, I think that's what's interesting about Notre Dame is that it it is a they they try to make it a welcoming place, you know, and, and you know Jason, can I say that when you're at Notre Dame you feel home? I know that sounds cheesy and really cliche, but there's a sense of calmness. Now maybe I get a little anxiety because I think of the pain from grad school, but <laughs> most people don't feel that. <laughs> I I do feel at home. I am there probably 15 weekends a year, which is a crazy lot. I mean, that's a third of the weekends, you know. Um, The only place I've ever been as welcoming as Notre Dame, I'll give these guys all the credit in the world. I went to Clemson last year, and those everybody was nice. Everybody in the stands, everybody before the game, everybody after the game. Everybody was really polite and nice and inviting. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Jason, something I wanted to kind of point out that you you mentioned early on how you know growing up you had to wear the notre dame helmet and that like at the young age you didn't really know what you were choosing it just was kind of thrust upon you in a way and you just happened to pick it up off the ground and be like this looks cool you know i'll carry this with me and then next thing you know you have grown adults being like what the hell is wrong with you why are you doing and then that like entrenched your love for notre dame as a Bengals fan, I can relate to that wholeheartedly. It, it, I had I don't know if you were on earlier when I mentioned my my grandmother, my great grandfather, big Bengals fans, but no one else in my life was a Bengals fan. And if you've watched professional football, if you've followed it, then you know that the '90s and the early 2000s and the 2010s were very difficult years to be a Bengals fan. It there was there was nothing I could say to uh, defend them really. And, and kind of the opposite if you had, you know, the rest of your family was Colts fans, right? Kind yeah. of the, you had the yin yang going oh, on. Oh, yeah. Right yeah. There. The Colts were doing great. So it was like, there were plenty of times I wanted to give up and support them. But something about having to defend from a young age this sports team really just drew me cl- in closer to them. It made me like love them more. And, and it was kind of ex- inexplicable because outside of the, the slight family connection, it's like, you know, the Colts are, you know, they're half an hour away, dude, like to support them. So I found that really interesting that, you know, you're, you're in a similar position where you just you just happen to kind of pick up notre dame via that way i think those are, i think those are my favorite ways that people kind of fall into their their sports fandoms yeah i have a friend who's an eagles fan because his brother always made him play he his brother wanted to be the colts in madden okay so he had to pick another team he just started picking the eagles and next thing you knew he'd <laughs> fall in love with them <laughs> that's awesome now is it um in your experience, Matt, as a as a Bengals fan, I, obviously they've had some fairly recent success recently with Joe Burrow and and going to the Super Bowl uh, in that wonderful run. Did have you found that you have come across more? Can you say bandwagon fans that are that are that are Bengals fans that like all of a sudden people are like, yeah, I'm a Bengals fan now, or or are you you don't really see that happen? Oh no, I mean you see your bandwagon fans and. What I find interesting, especially on, you'll see this on Twitter X, is these fans who, they're they're kind of new. They post a lot, and you know they're riding the ride. They start to get a bit of a following, and then as soon as things start to go bad, which you know the second year was a little rough, but we still made it to the AFC Championship. And the third year, Burrow gets hurt, right, a couple times really. They, I mean, they just fell apart immediately, and then you can spot the original fans who are like, okay, like. We've been down this road before. This is nowhere near as bad as it was in the Kit- John Kitna days or, you know, <laughs> every- Andy Dalton every other year or Carson Palmer. Like, this is, like, we're we're in good shape. We can mm-hmm. handle this. Um, but, yeah, there's definitely – and, you know, I honestly don't mind bandwagon fans that much because it brings in money to the team, yeah. which means we get to pay the players. We get to upgrade the facilities. Like, I'm all for that. Um I just wish they'd chill out a little bit when things start to go a little south. Yeah, yeah. No, that and that's interesting. And and the reason why I bring that up, and I think and I think this is the one thing that that really, you know, raised an eyebrow with me in a good way is well, we were having that conversation at your house, uh, was that like a month ago? We were talking about I, I kind of asked like like you told me a little bit about the story, but but you were you you kind of said jokingly in jest like the teams I root for, the teams I cheer for, haven't won a title in like forever. Or, or that's not but that's not what you said. You said like since you've been alive, they've yes. never won a title. Yes, right since nineteen ninety five. Okay, 
which is Notre Dame. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Notre Dame has not won a title since 1988. And in fact, they have not won a major bowl game in 30 years either. And when I say major bowl game, I mean the Rose Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, Fiesta Bowl, Sugar Bowl, Peach Bowl, and the Orange Bowl, right? The New right. Year's Six Bowls, as I like to say. Um, and, and that's something I harp on my show is like, look, can we at least get to that level? Obviously, everyone wants national championship, right? That That's spoiled. But can we win one of these major bowl games? Now, that's being changed a little bit now with the playoff situation because, like, you had the 14 playoff the last 10 years. Prior to that, you had the BCS, you know, system where they just picked the top two teams and said, okay, these two teams are going to play, which Notre Dame attempted in 2012. We don't really like talking about the outcome of that, but we get pounded by Alabama. But um, Notre Dame did make the, the, the 14 playoff twice in 2018 and 2020, um, but but – lost in the first round to eventually the national champion, which was interesting. Um, Clemson in 2018, Alabama in 2020. Um, Most teams, obviously, in college football can't say that they have done that, right? Our Mm -hmm. rival USC has not done that, right? Um, Michigan did once, you know, (laughs) this last year. You know, now there's a big asterisk with that, with (laughs) some of the sign stealing. I don't know if you've seen that. I I followed it a little bit. Yeah, okay. So you're aware of it, right? So so you also hate Michigan. Awesome. Great. All right. (laughs) Sweet. Awesome. So the, (laughs) um, yeah, that's my second second level of hell team. I I don't like Michigan, which is funny. Growing up in Los Angeles, obviously I hated SC. Um, I was kind of agnostic to Michigan. I actually hated like Ohio State and Sparty more. But then when I moved to the Midwest in 08 to go to Notre Dame, then I start learning more things about Michigan and the rivalry and why we don't like them. And then it's like, like, and, and then I had to ask, well, why don't I like Michigan State or Ohio State? It was because like we had like close games in the Weiss years with Michigan State. And so it was this, you know, them, they're planting the flag and because we screw the pooch and, you know, some of these other things. And it's like, that's why I don't like them. Eh, that's not a good reason enough for me versus Ohio State. Why do I not like them? Well, they win all the time and every time we play them, we lose. That doesn't seem like a good reason either. It could be, but like, like I actually learned to respect those teams more and maybe a little bit was. Well, they are the quote two rival teams for Michigan, so it's like the the enemy of my enemy is my friend. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's right, like, right. uh, maybe you know, like obviously we played Ohio State the last you know three times, four times, and we've lost every single time as Notre Dame fans, so we don't like that. Um, but it's like, well, it's not because we were really screwed out. It just it just didn't go our way. You know, this last game we didn't have eleven people on the field in the last play. You know, like. <laughs> It's, it's hard to win you know like you're you're giving yourself you know in the you have one guy in the penalty box right yeah <laughs> jump over the boards get out there um but anyway the um why do i say all this just as as you see a little bit of bandwagon fans with um with the Bengals, i really don't think there's bandwagon fans with notre dame in fact i i think notre dame fans are, are very entrenched to people like Jason and whatnot, you know, and there's little things that happen to them at a young age, whether you get inundated with your family in my case, um, or, or, you know, your grandma was Irish or, you know, you, you, you grew up in the, you know, South Bend, you know, St. Joseph County diocese or whatever it is, you know, um, the, there's, I think a lot of, avenues that bring people to notre dame that you don't get at like lsu or alabama or something um or even ohio state you know like like ohio state people it's like i'm from ohio or you know and that's just the team we root for you know if you're in the south the sec the conference um you obviously you don't really have professional football teams in the south right you know unless you're the titans fan or something you know what i mean but Mm -hmm. like like people in mississippi like what pro team are you going to cheer for? Maybe the Saints? I don't know. No, they have Ole Miss and Mississippi State, right? And it's usually there's some family connection or you live nearby type of thing, you know? So the lines are clearly drawn, you know? Same with Texas. I mean, they got the Cowboys down there, but like Texas people definitely choose like University of Texas, Texas A&M. There's a few random, you know, Texas Tech people, but they're very entrenched and it's very geographically based. Notre Dame doesn't have any of that. Like the whole point with Notre Dame and how they got to 
national prominence is obviously is this small college in northern Indiana. And Newt Rockney, you've probably heard of him before. Newt Rockney would put the team uh, and they go across the country and they would play Army. Army was the big bad team. They were like the Alabama of back in the day in the 20s, okay. right? They would go play Army at West Point and they'd get pounded, but then they'd start winning. Okay. And then that's where like the media thing, like, and, and if you think back to like, around that time, right? There's a lot of Catholic bias and prejudice. There's also a lot of prejudice against immigrants. And a lot of immigrants are from where? From Ireland, mm -hmm. from Italy, from Poland. It's that these Catholic people. So you have P Catholic people on the East Coast, the Midwest, you know, hotbeds like, like Chicago or wherever else where you have large Catholic populations. And so you have this small Catholic university that's playing big bad army and beating them in Yankee stadium and stuff like that. And you start having these like legendary things. And so then the sports writers and the newspaper people start right, like kind of giving them the slur of the fighting Irish. And what's great in 1927, Notre Dame actually embraces that. Oh, so like fighting Irish was not, did not originate no, in the school. No, actually originally Notre if you go back into the archives, Notre Dame's original mascot was the Terriers. Actually, no, this this is a good point to make because I'm I'm literally looking at your your pendant on the, the wall right now. Notre Dame fighting Irish. French French name, name fighting Irish. Yes. Because a lot of the original uh you know members of uh, uh you know from anyone from from priests at at notre dame to their students you know for for from irish catholic families oh wow okay that's okay. really cool yeah and then and then you bring in you know italian and polish people and, and all this other stuff starts 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 coming in it, it it ended up becoming this this galvanizing force for catholics quite frankly at a time when they were kind of being oppressed or whatnot and and so what started off as a slur then was originally and officially adopted as the mascot as the fighting irish in 1927 i'm not gonna lie that is incredibly badass isn't and that badass it, it's funny too as i brought up earlier notre dame french my last name is french mm -hmm. on my mom's side we are irish my grandmother uh i believe no she had shit. cousins in court county so like actually not like irish like oh yeah my great great grandmother like you know married an irishman and then divorced him but like no like actual Irish descendants, I believe they they uh, originated in the, I think the second wave of Irish immigrants. Right. So I got the Irish and the French in me. Brilliant. And yeah, I, I'm I'm shocked that I never made that connection. That is, but that is awesome that they would they would embrace it like that. Yeah, it is. And what's really cool is that in the era of, of modern day, like like let's jump to the present, right? And we don't we try to avoid being political here, but it's kind of hard to in today's day and age. But you had the Cleveland Indians change to the Guardians. You had the Washington Redskins change to uh, what are the, they, commanders. the Commanders now. Yeah, you know, worst and, name ever. They had uh, so many. They had, so many. They could have gone with the, the the like the, the Hogs because like the the fan base already had like a connection to the Hogs. There's some sort. Okay. I think it was their offensive line or uh, defensive line at some point. Yeah, that's a and like so thing. a very like a big part of their fan base wanted to go with the Hogs or like the War Pigs or something. Okay, and they went with the Commanders, <laughs> which shorts. <laughs> Shortens to the commies, and their colors are red and yellow. Oh, the Washington communists. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I never made that connection. But I also don't really watch the NFL. But that's fine. <laughs> so what's interesting? Hey, Joe. Is, yo. One thing I'd be remiss if we're talking about the Fighting Irish nickname. Sorry, buddy. I just pushed my kid away instinctively, <laughs> not on purpose. Um, <laughs> the. Uh, there's a really good article. I don't remember what decade it was, the 50s or 60s, where they the article in the like the South Bend Tribune or something said uh, fighting Irish solidify their name, and they had fighting in quotations because a bunch of stu students rose up and beat the shit out of the Klan in Northern yeah. Ireland when they came to rally there. So if you want to show them that article, that's that's where it kind of got solidified mainstream in the in the modern day yeah no that that's true and yeah there there's all sorts of yeah we'll, we'll come back to the clan thing because that actually was a legit thing that happened um i think it was i don't know about but what decade you're referring to jason but i do know in 1924 which is the year notre dame first got its first national championship in football when undefeated um and they beat stanford which is funny in the rose bowl um there, there's a book I have. It's somewhere in the house. I don't know where it is, but it's, um, it's called Her Loyal Sons, and it, it, it chronolo it, it, it's a, 
it, it describes the team and one of the chapters talks about how um the kkk that did have a presence a strong presence in indiana had made their way up to south bend and that the not just a strong presence i think indiana had the largest chapter stronghold like it was yeah, bigger it was than any other chapter in the country it was the most active but it was the biggest it was huge back in the day which is you know unfortunate but back to 1924 is that the students at notre dame heard about this were pissed and they went down there to basically to fight them to which the holy cross priest said you guys need to come back to campus, and if you don't, you will be expelled, quite frankly, because they they wanted nonviolence, right? Which kind of goes into other stuff we were talking about earlier about Notre Dame being a happy, welcoming place. Not that we welcome clan members, but <laughs> right, yeah, you still don't want your students. I'm pretty sure that if people violence. showed up in bed sheets at Notre Dame, there would be uh, there'd be some uh, there'd be some fights. I'll just put it that way, yeah. you know. But which is probably a good thing. But not that we like violence. But anyway, the um, what's what's Back to the guardians and the commanders thing. In today's era of political correctness and other things, there was some article, voting, fake news, whatever you want to describe it, where it said the most offensive mascots. And whoever these people were, who knows what they are? They clearly don't have spines. But they said that Notre Dame's Fighting Irish was the fourth most offensive the fourth? Uh, I know. It's behind like Florida <laughs> State and a few at like like San Diego State. Basically native stuff, right? And and so they said the, the Fighting Irish Leprechaun or the Fighting Irish was a- offensive. Notre Dame, to which turns around, doubles down and says, per- politely, fuck you, <laughs> and says, no, this is true to our identity as a university, the galvanizing force behind this school, and um, a strong part of, of who we are. And no it's never going away and so that was and that was recent that was probably within the last three years that that came about out i think it's an article in 2001 i was summarizing through it uh earlier today uh in the indie star believe it or not you know okay so an actual decent piece of journalism came out of that um piece that that rag so (laughs) color me shocked sometimes i sometimes referred to as the indie red star i've I've heard (laughs) i like that (laughs) yeah yeah <laughs> go right in cuba okay I... <laughs> anyway but yeah no no major bowl wins for notre dame in recent years at all last last major bowl win was from the 19 that's quote unquote great notre dame season quotes as 1993 um where uh we had one loss which is tragic we won't go into that that'll make people really you know want to you know you know punish themselves um but we won the Cotton Bowl against Texas A&M, which is funny because that's our last major bowl victory. And we are playing Texas A&M first this season. That was the last time Notre Dame played Texas A&M, I believe. I, I, I'd have to double check that. But the Texas A&M show is next week. So, <laughs> okay. yeah, down to Texas A&M. So, um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the high level macro stuff. Now, here's some interesting stuff, kind of bringing things back around to the present. Um, and we'll start to wrap things up. Marcus Freeman is the head coach. He originally went to Ohio State, played there, played for Jim Trestle there, went to the NFL, but then had some health issues, so he had to had to end his professional career. Um, got into coaching. Long story short, is now our head coach. This is now his third season. What's funny is um Notre Dame among Notre Dame fans, when you talk about a new head coach and their third year, good things happen. Not always, but a decent coach that's worth a crap, good things happen in third year. Um, you know, Dan Devine, uh, Eric Parsegian, um, Lou Holtz. They all won their first title with Notre Dame in year three. Brian Kelly, the last decent coach that Notre Dame had, did very well in year three and went undefeated up to the national championship game, 12-0, and and then got pounded in the face by by Alabama, right? Um, but we did that on the heels of defense, right? To which Notre Dame's defense, you know who their defensive coordinator is. Hint, he was a linebacker's coach uh, for the Bengals when they did their run for the Super Bowl. It's Al Golden. Yeah. Okay. Al Golden. So he's a defensive coordinator. He oh, was wow. a former... Yeah. By the way, if you're not a Bengals fan, our linebackers are amazing. Yeah. Like, we, got, we have a good set of linebackers, so... 
that bodes well for you guys. Yeah, yeah. And that that is one of the strengths of Notre Dame's defense right now is is the depth at linebacker and the defensive line, which is just the defense in general is is very deep ton of returning starters i did a show two weeks ago about about you know who was coming back and there i there was this huge analysis i did and i was like okay we got all these guys that are now entering year three into the system under the same coach really getting into the groove and what's really interesting as i looked at the progression from year one first year under al golden you know he was he was brought in as the defensive coordinator the first year that marcus freeman took over as head coach um, so you had a first year DC at Notre Dame, first year head coach at Notre Dame, first head coach period, quite frankly. And, you know, you can see there's some some rockiness as expected with a first year coach. Then you see, and then I said in last year, entering year two, like, hey, the defense got to show improvement in year two. Otherwise, Golden, you know, hit the bricks, right? And for crying out loud, it was amazing, significantly better than than year one we won't get into the, all the details of the spreadsheet on the stats on that but it was significantly better what's cool about it now is now you have all this depth coming back and then you have a defensive minded coach in marcus freeman who did was a linebacker at ohio state and went and played for national championships under jim trestle but never actually won one as a player so now he's a head coach entering year three and year three was this magical year where either you won a title or you got really close and i'm so i'm not like you know holding anything to fate or whatever but but i would be remiss if notre dame fans in the third year were not interested and ex- eagerly excited about year three with Marcus Freeman, who at this point entering his third year has a better winning percentage than uh than brian kelly did entering year three and also a much better winning percentage than lou holtz did entering year three who was the last coach who won the national title for notre dame so that i thought was kind of interesting um what is also kind of cool and get bringing back to the catholic thing marcus freeman how many children do you have just guess five seven (laughs) he has seven kids and he actually converted to catholicism within weeks of taking the head coaching job. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Which I don't know if that was part of his contract. I don't think so. I think that was something that, <laughs> that I think, you know, again, feeling home, coming home to Catholicism, right? You know, like, you know, people, people, all the Catholic people who are into apologetics, you know, know what I'm talking about. They're nodding right now in their cars as they listen to us. But, you know, coming home to the Catholic church, you know, the original church that Christ founded. And so, and it, I can imagine for his home life, you know, if his wife is a practicing Catholic, he's raising his children Catholic, you know, they're going to mass or, you know, they're being baptized, this, all, this, that, and the other. For him, the dad, the leader of the family, you know, to also be a, that that spiritual role model for his family, his wife, his children, um, you know, that, that makes things much easier. And he even turned things around, like Notre Dame would have mass and then they'd walk from from the, Notre Dame goes to mass before every every game. Oh, wow. Yes, and and back in the day they used to to go to mass and then they would walk across campus uh in this kind of not a conga line, that's not the right way to say it, but but down it, it was called the play, it's called the player walk. Okay. And so people like line up the the thing uh, you know on the sidewalk, right? And they they you know cheer the team on as they they walk from mass into the stadium to you know get ready to play and so the fans are all there like yeah you know go Irish you know and stuff like that um so so that is a tradition you know and and let's put it this way you know the guys that come to notre dame the players the student athletes they're not all catholic Mm -hmm. you know manti teo was mormon he's lds right you know and he you know has a heisman bid right you know but but there's something that that draws and invites people to to notre dame and i think they're embracing that and just like you know if you had a non you know, Catholic person go to Catholic mass, you know, you're happy they're there, you know, mm-hmm. obviously right. it's inappropriate for you to receive communion if you don't believe it's the body and blood of Christ. But point I'm making is, you know, it, it's in line with what Notre Dame is doing and encouraging. Right. But yeah. The team as a team goes to mass before yeah. every game, which is pretty tight. Joe is, Matt, Joe is underselling the players walk to the guard walks, the band starts like it is, it's, well, it's, it's the, the band marching theater. is a little different, you know. I mean, it's it's, it's theater. It it's pretty awesome. It's it the, the there. I've got some some sweet video of of the band starting up, 
leaving. Um, th there's an area of, of campus, if you're a student, that's called God Quad because there's like a statue of Jesus, you know, there's there's the basilica, there's the dome, you know, so there's all this spiritual reminders around you. And it's a very, it's a central part of campus and it's very pretty. Um, but the band will line up in God Quad and they'll march as a marching band you know, down into, uh, down to the stadium, which is pretty tight, but, but that happens after the player walk. So usually there's the player walk and then, you know, they the band does their thing around campus at various places and they line up and then they march in and then that, and then that's usually when the fans start going into. So sounds pretty epic. It, it really is. But, um, so, so there's all these, uh, we haven't talked a whole lot about like X's and O's football stuff, but these are some of the things that I think bring it. And, and then, in addition to that, Notre Dame has been a good football team. You know, they have a very good record as far as win percentages go. Now, there's not a whole lot of hardware that's super legit in the trophy case, but we did win our last two bowl games, you know, which is nice. Now, they were like the Gator Bowl and I don't even remember the Sun Bowl, right? You know, it's a, you know, the Frosted Flake Sun Bowl, you know, <laughs> sweet. Thank you, Tony the Tiger. It's yeah. funny. Th there's a connection there, too, now between Frosted you know, Flakes. Well, or? no, uh, no oh. you said Notre Dame, you know, good team, right? But they just can't bring it home when yeah. it matters most yeah that was cincinnati went through a run like that when we had marvin lewis was our head coach for 16 years i think at one point before he uh, left him and bilicek were like the longest tenured coaches active at that point oh right okay because i think bilicek was ahead by a couple seasons but um we went to the playoffs seven times under him five of those times were in a row and didn't win and when they lost their fifth one in 2015, and probably the most, this is the most traumatic game. I cannot rewatch clips from it. If I hear people talking about it, I have to leave the room. It was just, it was one of the worst experiences of my life to watch this playoff game against our rival, the Steelers, whom we hate more than anything. Fun fact: uh, ten years ago, we met them in the playoffs again, and they, one of their defensive tackles, like broke Carson Palmer's knee, our quarterback, oh, yeah, right at the remember. beginning of the game. Yeah. And that we probably he went gone. to SC though we don't really care about that. <laughs> but at, at any rate, when we lost that one, we became the first team in the NFL to go to five playoff games straight and lose all of them in the opening round. Wow! So that was that was our like people would say, oh, the Bengals sucks. Like, well, we're good. We're good win percentages. Like, we win the yeah. division a couple times. Yeah. You know, it just prime time kind when of when it really apart. matters. Yeah. Sometimes. Well, and that's kind of funny because that was kind of like the 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 sticking point with brian kelly it's like like you're you're winning some of these games and you have a good winning percentage you accumulate wins you know like nine win seasons 10 plus win seasons right you know and, and especially in the latter years of brian kelly um but like the games that really matter like you know like like if i if i mention some of these games some of these people are just going to roll their eyeballs are going to roll out of the room you know florida state 2014 we go down there we're ranked in the top five or something and we we lose on a bullshit you know, offensive pass interference call for a bullshit pick play, which is completely ridiculous. And you watch the replay, the Notre Dame receiver is wide open in the in end zone and whatever they called has no impact on what actually happened on the field it is ridiculous. Um, there's a few other close ones. Uh, Clemson of 2015, you know, didn't quite make it. Um, Georgia of 2017, we lose by one point. Okay, Georgia of 2019, similar thing. This is not quite the same uh, defeat margin, but really close. There's some big games, big time moments where it just doesn't quite get done. Now, what's unfortunate is when we have gone to the big games, like the playoffs games, um, you know, the New Year's Six type of games. The last one that we lost that was close was actually the first game Marcus Freeman ever had to coach. So in 2021... Brian Kelly is the head coach. Okay, I'm entering my second season doing this show. Okay, just quick for my friend reference. Yeah, I I know Brian Kelly because he was the coach of the Eagles briefly. No, 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 no. That's Chip Kelly. Chip Kelly. Kelly. Okay, that's what yeah. I'm thinking of. How long He's was now Bra the offensive coordinator at Ohio State? But yeah. okay, that's I knew he. I knew I know. Kelly had come back into yeah. the college. So you could see it. how someone who drinks like too much whiskey would get these things confused, <laughs> you know? <laughs> how long was Brian Kelly a coach at Notre Dame? Uh, let's see. He started in 2010, which is really funny. 12 years. 12, 12 years? You, yeah. I, I can't is that, just is that a long answer. time 
Yeah, that is a long time. That was more he a had long coached, time at Notre Dame. He he coached more years than um than Lou Holtz. And then the media is stupid. They they say, Oh, the winningest most coach. Yeah, because he was there for so long, but he, <laughs> he doesn't have anything to show for it. I mean, he really doesn't. I mean, I, I don't want to say that. I don't want to be too unkind because because Notre Dame was clearly in a much better place after Kelly left than when it, he picked up the job taking mm-hmm leaving Cincinnati to come to Notre Dame. But what's funny is he goes as having a really good season. We're going to go to the Fiesta Bowl. We're playing um, Oklahoma State, okay? And he bails and takes the job at LSU. And it's like, well, why? Like, why would you not finish out the year? This is where people are going to say, because well, bowl games don't matter. They do now because of the new playoff format. But, but he leaves, and I really think that if Kelly was coaching, we probably could have won. Now that's not to say anything against Marcus Freeman. Marcus Freeman was appointed the interim head coach originally, and then was appointed the head coach prior to the game. So he had to kind of put together a game plan with, and hold his staff together and, you know, be a head coach for the first time. Oh, and you're going to a BCS game against a coach who's been doing it for, you know, 12 years over at Oklahoma state or whatever, whatever uh, Mike Gundy was doing at the time. But point is, Marcus Freeman takes up, takes the reins, takes the job, and then has to go to a, a New Year's Six game. That's his first time coaching at Notre Dame. It's also his first time being a head coach, period. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then what's also interesting is his next game, the next season, fall of 2022, he has to go back to Ohio State to start the season, the 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 place where he played. So he knows it very well. Oh, and you have to play over there. Mm-hmm. And then he comes back and it's like, okay, finally, Marcus Freeman is going to, he's finally at home. He's finally co- coaching in the, the, the safe cocoon that is Notre Dame that we talked about earlier, these welcoming fans and this nice place, you know, makes, you know, uh, Irish JTL here very happy. Okay. And we lose, you know, who we lost to Marshall. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 warning. Uh, yeah, I got really drunk after that. Okay. But uh, because of that, I watched Top Gun too, which was fun. But the um, but the Marshall game was not. And I was the DD for because I went with a bunch of Knights of Columbus people. I had a friend from Texas who came up. I hadn't seen him in five years, had never been to Notre Dame before, and he had to watch that shit show. <laughs> so uh, that's it. That's I all. took my kid. I took my kid to my wife. I sold my season tickets and bought four. <clears throat> Just to watch that shit show. Because I was sure my, God, what was he at the time? Five-year-old would see them win. Yeah. Oh, God. That's rough. There were there was some, like, weird angst going on in that game. Now, we eventually pulled it together. And we had a winning season. We won a, you know, you know. But there there was some growth there, you know. And it's so, and, and, and so... It's like it's like like the Rocky start, you know, the Rocky Road to Dublin here. I don't, I'm, I don't I'm sure oh, you've yeah. heard that song, right? Okay, love that song. We could play it, you know, if we want. But the um, things are not rosy and hunky dory at Notre Dame, and I think I think and this is I think what I kind of want to end on here because Notre Dame prides itself on being excellent. They are not they are not phased by things being difficult they are not phased by quote-unquote making it harder for themselves it would be really easy for notre dame to sell out on um you know the academics thing and just say hey look we're gonna pay players you know with this nil stuff you know we're gonna recruit and put ferraris in front of the the recruiting office here which is what other people do literally other schools will bring ferraris and lamborghinis and park them in front of their practice fields i don't know why but they do that to you know i guess brainwash the the five four five star talent that they want to come and play there now i want four and five star talent to come to notre dame too but notre dame says okay that's fine if you're a good athlete but you can't be an a-hole you can't have a criminal record quite frankly um, and they burn players if they do shit like this. And you have to be fairly smart. In 2012, Notre Dame goes to the title with a guy named Everett Golson. He was our quarterback, right? He ends up having like some sort of academic infraction, cheats on a test or something, gets expelled. Notre Dame, and, and he has to sit out for an entire year. Oh, wow. This is the quarterback who took your team to a national championship. And we said, no, this is a place of higher learning that stands for excellence. You're fucking gone. So he had to work his way back 
And then he eventually, the prodigal son returns right in 2014, which then makes that season even more painful because we're undefeated with him. We go to this Florida state game and we lose by a close bullshit margin. And then you just see this precipitous fall Mm -hmm. in 2014, which was really painful. But then we end up winning the bowl game with uh, Malik Zaire and Mike Denbrock, who's now our offensive coordinator, who's back for his third lap at Notre Dame, which is, which is a whole other story we talked about a couple weeks ago. But why do I bring this up? Notre Dame benched and suspended their starting quarterback. How many other schools would do that? Maybe Stanford would, you know, Northwestern. That's kind of a smart school place. They got, they've got some hazing problems over at Northwestern right now, but, or they did, um, you know, so, so it's like, like crazy shit like that. Um, in what was it? 2016. Someone help me out here. There was, uh, there was a group of players that got, uh, pulled over for speeding, Busted taillight, weed in the car, and an unregistered Sean fire. Sean Crawford. Sean Crawford. Yeah, I think Dexter Williams was in that group. Yeah, Dexter like, Williams. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The, the the Fulton County Five, I think, is what they were called. But like, <laughs> like they ended up getting busted. They had to sit for a couple games, you know. For you know, I mean, is is I don't want to say a, a unregistered handgun is is a is a minor issue, you know. Like I got that's a whole other podcast about that. But <laughs> my point is like like. Like Notre Dame does not let these guys skate. They Mm -hmm. don't sweep things under the rug. They demand, you know, not only act, but, but they don't just also just like let you float. They don't just say, all right, it's up to you to get this. No, they, they give these guys all the resources and support they need to be successful. One thing that Notre Dame does, and this is kind of a cliche thing, and, and this makes some people upset, but in general, I think if you really ask people what's in their heart, they'll say this is good. Notre Dame is a 40-year decision, not a four-year decision. When you go to Notre Dame, it's setting you up for life. You're going to be connected with people you never would have been before. And not that it's like some secret society, mm-hmm. you know, Illuminati bullshit. No, like, like, we'll take you from wherever you are, welcome you. And you'll we'll we'll beat the hell out of you on the football field and in the classroom, but you get through that, the doors open up for you and your life to a be better for yourself, but just be better for society. Period. And I don't think anyone who listens to this show or who 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 really gets Notre Dame will say that that's a bad thing. It's not. Certainly, the parents don't think so. You know, now maybe they're they're short sighted and they just want to see Lamborghinis and Ferraris. I don't know, but I think, but Notre Dame chooses to have that position and that stance even in today, Mm -hmm. which I think is great. You know, that doesn't make it easy. That actually may hinder recruiting. You don't get the best defensive linemen, the, the face ripper, people stabbing puppies because they're psychos, even though they're good athletic talents. No, you actually have to go to class. You have to take calculus one and there, there's I don't, I don't remember what the minimum requirements are but but you have to have some level of intelligence but notre dame will also support you if they really believe that you have the chops to make it there and there are guys who have struggled on the way but made their way through it jerome bettis is an excellent example i know he's a steelers guy yeah. so, so you're just kind of like, cringe a little bit okay <laughs> uh, I, I i can't think of, of of someone else who maybe had a had a had a tougher go at it, but but came out of the end that uh, went to the Bengals. The only Bengals guy that's a Notre Dame guy I know is Tyler Eifert, right? Which you're just like, well, he was injured all the time, so you know, yeah. Good player, good player. I, I, we really wanted him to succeed uh, when he was playing. He showed great flashes. Very smart guy, which I'm now starting to see is just the Notre Dame effect. But yeah, very smart guy, very good player. Just the Notre Dame effect. Got the got the injury bug one too many times. Yeah, which is unfortunate, and that happens, right? Yep. Um. But I mean that's 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 life as a pro football player, right? In the NFL. So but yeah, I think I think Notre Dame is special in the sense that they do this to themselves knowingly and willingly, knowing it's gonna be harder, while simultaneously saying at in the like a timeout, a TV timeout, they'll display on the Jumbotron and say, Hey, and they'll have this like promo whatever thing, and they'll say, By the way, after the game, join us for mass. Mass is after every single home game, like 30, 40 minutes afterwards, and it's packed. 
because you have all these Catholic people there, they're, they're like, oh, I'm going to fulfill my Sunday obligation at a vigil mass mm-hmm. on a Saturday, right? And, you know, I've done it multiple times, right? I prefer going in the morning just because it's, I'm not wearing all my Notre Dame, <laughs> right. you know, stuff. You know, I don't look like a yeah. leprechaun when I'm going into, you know, God's house, right? But <laughs> So it sounds like Notre Dame might be one of the very few places where, you know, they say one thing and that's actually what they mean. Yes. So, I mean, every other place it's, oh, you know, we love you. We care about you. We support you. But in reality, it's yeah, what you do you contribute injured, to our bottom? Bricks, yeah. You know, what do you like, contribute to our bottom dollar? And if you, if it's nothing, then hit the road, Jack. Where it's yeah. here in Notre Dame, it sounds like it's, you know, we, we would love to have a successful football team and we're doing our best to build that w- yeah. one up and we hope you can help us. But we also care about what you do in four years later. Oh yeah. Not everyone's going to the NFL. No. So what what the hell else are you gonna do? We're here to help you. That's that's amazing. Yeah. No, it, it really is, and I, I think that's something. Like I was talking to uh, someone at, at at work. This is years ago, but he he's an Ohio State guy, and he ended up um, like going to going there and playing. I forget who the big of uh, Eddie Hayes or who who's the big time Ohio State coach from back then. I don't know. I'm not an Ohio State guy, but but whoever that guy is. Um, he, um, he ended up playing for a band of getting injured and then it was a hit the bricks kind of situation, you know? And it's like, well, and you still kind of like Ohio state, but I don't know, you know, maybe it's Stockholm syndrome with that guy, but <laughs> the, um, but, but yeah, no, you're hundred percent right. Notre Dame knows what they're doing as they do this while still pursuing academic excellence and, uh, athletic excellence, um, especially on the football field. And, and I am not going to shy or kid myself for a minute that, the success of the football team, anyone from Newt Rockney to, you know, up to Dan Devine and, and even Lou Holtz in the eighties, that, that success of the football and that, that, that allowed the, the media to grab attention of, of Notre Dame expand the um, exposure of Notre Dame to, to America, quite frankly, and um, shed some light on this little university in south bend indiana which quite frankly has the biggest fan base in america quite frankly which is weird you know <laughs> and their rival is a team in california you know, like, okay <laughs> so so do you want to be a notre dame fan now or, or you're I mean, you're probably peaked and interested now, i'm definitely you know, like, i'm definitely interested. this feels like i mean you mentioned third year for the head coach things feel like they're kind of lined up yeah. um the, I, I like actually that you spent less time on the football team itself because I know football. I watch NFL. Sure. Like I, like, yeah, we got to talk. You know, offensive plays yeah. and strategies. And that would have been, been cool. But like, how the what, benefits of blast versus trap? You know, you know, but, the RTD beast kind of stuff. Matt, where do you live? So I live in a little tiny town in like South Central Indiana. Um, so You're like an hour away from me. So. What's that? I'm doing a game. Come to a game. I'm definitely interested now. Like from way you, I mean, you, you want a Miami it and, of Ohio ticket? You want a Miami of Ohio ticket? It's on me. Are Are you sure? I'm sure. I have an extra one. I'm never gonna sell one. You'll have to sit by my buddy, who's a row and four seats over from my season passes because he joined late. So you want to go to a game? I have a Miami of Ohio ticket with your name on it. You can tailgate with us. We're in the stadium lot and you can come and party with us and go to a game. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I'll have to check with my, my wife slash calendar. To make sure. <laughs> Your event planner. Get with yeah. Joe and let me know. I'll, yeah. I'll literally give you the ticket. Dude, it was that, like 80 bucks. That's awesome. Hey, I really I really appreciate that. And yeah, and, and I, like I want to be clear. Like, And I'm not just saying this now because you made that, that very generous offer, it's, but also just hearing uh, Joe talk about it like I said, not just talking about the football, because what 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 does Notre Dame bring to football that's different than you know the hundreds? We of did other bring schools? the forward pass to. And the I I do day. actually have the some forward notes. Pass, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I I do have some notes about uh some contributions the Bengals made. I want to get to right before oh, we wrap good. up. No, that's but I, um, we invited the Wookie to jump on because he's he's a loyal member of the show and he's a huge Bengals fan. Oh so. well, awesome. <laughs> but continue, continue. But, uh, I want to hear. But I just want to say that the fact that you actually focus on the school and what the school itself represents and offers. And the fact that, you know, Jason, who, you know, you mentioned he's not a Catholic, Mm-mm. he's not from South Bend, Indiana, like, nope. but he still feels attachment to Notre Dame, not just like 
the X's and O's, but like a the actual firm attachment. Yeah, and like you mentioned, like the Basilica is your second favorite place there. Like that's that's pretty cool. That tells me that there's something very special about Notre Dame, and I I, I won't lie, I'm pretty fired up right now to. You got to You got to take it with your name on it. It's the second home game of the year. I believe it's nine twenty one. September 21st, you wanted the ticket yours. I'll never sell a single, and I'm using five of my six. So, okay, feel free. Get yeah. with Joe. Uh, he can do the transaction till till we meet, but that ticket's got your name on it if you want it. Awesome. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk with Joe about that. Talk to your event planner. Yeah, talk to my event planner too, <laughs> my wife. Um, but speaking of notable contributions to football, I want to just yes. point out a couple, because uh, you mentioned, you know, uh, just just in case, have some Bengals uh, team records yes. pulled up, and I found these interesting. Uh, so, and this is NFL wise, you know, I don't know. That's fine. Maybe college would beat everyone else to it. I don't I, know. I, but. I am. Let me. I don't hate the NFL. I spend a lot of eyeball time, you know, watching college on Saturdays or wherever. Clearly, a lot of time doing this production here. Um, that you know, someone else is not mowing my lawn, you know, mm-hmm. and taking care of my children and my wife. So, like, it's like eh, no, like Sunday. I, I would love to, ha- it, it, sometimes it's not in the background, you know, and I'll check stuff out, but you know, right. Fair. Totally understandable. Okay. So the, the Bengals were the first team to start using the no huddle offense for Ooh. the entire game. Okay. So teams had used the no huddle offense usually like in the last, like, you know, two minutes of the game, you know, things are coming down to the wire, but they were the first team that went, Hey, what if we just do this the whole game? And there's a fun little story with that. So the, the Bengals had beaten the Bills three times in 1988, preseason, regular season, and then they beat them in the AFC Championship game. Before the AFC Championship game, uh, Mark Levy, who's the coach of the Bills, threatened to fake injuries during the game if the Bengals were using their no-huddle offense. <laughs> so the commissioner said, okay. So they were soccer don't. players. Right. So the commissioner <laughs> said, don't do that. That You can't do that. And then had someone tell the the Bengals that they were not, it was illegal that the, the referees would penalize them for the no huddle offense. And so the Bengals coach was like, let me talk to the commissioner. And the commissioner's like, okay, fine, we won't do that. Now, no one faked any injuries. The Bengals beat them and went on to unfortunately lose in Super Bowl. But the next year, uh, the Bills were using the no huddle offense. Oh, look at that. So, oh, and by what? the way, the, Fun fact, Mark Levy went to uh, Co-College, Coach Co-College in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where I live. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. Um, and I, I forgot to mention this tidbit. The The Bengals were notified that it would be illegal to run the no-huddle offense two hours before the AFC Championship. Oh. So there was no time to adjust game plan. So yeah. the fact they were able to get that fixed was, helped. Uh, <laughs> this is a big one. Um, this one like kills me to this day, even though I wasn't even live. We created the West Coast offense. Oh, okay. So uh, Bill Walsh obviously is mm-hmm. the one who created it, but he was an assistant head coach from 1968 to 1975 in Cincinnati. Interesting. And I did he, not know that. He had been developing it and was crushing it because we had... Uh, and then he took it to Stanford before he went to... Well, so uh, he was supposed to be head coach when Paul Brown stepped down. Okay. Paul Brown had someone else picked out and went with him. It crushed Bill Walsh and he left with San Francisco. And, you know, the 80s happened yeah. with San Francisco. Um, and who was the quarterback? Of the, of the 49ers. Well, that's Joe Montana, right? And where did he go? Did he go to Notre Dame? Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm very conflicted this, now. So, 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 real quick, I know, I know you're on a social media restriction right now. Yes. When you're done, let me know. There are two games I want you to watch. This is like homework, but it'll be delayed, and you might go to a Notre Dame game before this even happens. <laughs> There's two games I want you to watch. Number one is the 1977 Green Jersey game, which has Joe Montana in it. Okay. The second one is a game actually Notre Dame loses, but arguably the best game I've ever seen. And it's the legendary Bush Push game. Okay. So I'll just I'll just leave it at it. Right, people yep. have other suggestions of quote unquote great Notre Dame games that you FSU know, Notre Dame ninety three. Yeah, that's a good one. The game okay. of the century in nineteen ninety three. You're gonna have to text me these, Joe. I, I would I would actually suggest over that one the uh Catholics versus convicts game. There there's a whole shirt that was made. There's actually an <laughs> I would take that I would take that too. Yeah. The Catholics versus convicts of eighty eight. Miami, you know, like this is another reason why I hate Miami, but that's a whole other okay. story. Okay. Cool. But yeah, so 
West Coast offense could have been the Queen City offense. It became wow. that close. Now, what? How do you stop the West Coast offense? The zone blitz. Who created the zone blitz? Cincinnati Bengals. Go on a limb and say the Bengals. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, our our defensive coordinator. You know, obviously, you know, was on the same team as Bill Walsh, and so he was developing a defense against it wow. as time went on. So, yeah, we. Uh, so I would say those are some pretty substantial contributions. That is substantial. To, yeah. To the and, in Cincinnati, the Queen City? Yeah. Yeah. So, I, did I, you guys I, fight Charlotte for that? Like, how does that work? Oh, it beats me. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. It's, I just want to know, like, who, like, because Charlotte claims that, too. I just want to know, like, do you guys, like, rumble in West Virginia? Like, how do we get that settled? <laughs> I mean, if there's going to be a uh, battle in West Virginia over this, I will gladly participate if that's what's necessary to <laughs> keep the title Queen City. This, this sounds like a Civil Bob War it. reenactment that's about to happen. <laughs> that's or right. Yep. Just go burn Charlotte to the ground. <laughs> there we go. That's yep. Dixie. I'm Whistling listening, Dixie. But, yeah, See? Okay. Oh, so you're on Charlotte's side, huh? <laughs> no, I don't know. No, I, just, I just picked one. <laughs> like, what did the Union, you know, Pipe player, you know, play. Oh, I have I no know, idea. You know, someone with a. I've listened to a couple of mad. It's mad actually a lot flute. of fun to listen to old, uh, like Civil War era folk songs. They're 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 pretty fun. Yeah. Um. But yeah, those are those are some of the bigger contributions. Now I'm a fan of the Dukes of Hazard, but that was more of the the cars jumping over <laughs> rivers right. and stuff. But <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, we brought Wookie on. Uh, invite you to speak because you're a Bengals guy and you're on mute and you're probably starting your work shift here. Hey, what's going on, guys? Actually, no, I'm off today. I only work oh, uh, okay. Saturday, Sunday overnights. Yeah, but I do go in tomorrow early. Oh, okay. Well, we won't keep you if if you gotta have an early, early, uh, early bedtime for you. Any questions for Matt or anything? We we are trying to convert him over to uh, be a Notre Dame fan and and explain the the excellence that is Notre Dame and and share our joy with him. So maybe it is his joy if he decides. Yeah, um, I am from Cincinnati, Ohio. Love Bengals, was grown up on it uh, for my dad. Same thing with uh, Notre Dame. My dad loved Notre Dame, but he went to the University of Cincinnati. Well, when I got older, I was like, um, sorry, you see, I'm totally 100% diehard Notre Dame. And uh, met up with a best friend of mine at the time who had season tickets his grandparents did so i went up to like six different games up there and the campus is just gorgeous like you'll be sucked in right away for sure if you go up there i'm le- i'm really looking forward to it. i hope i can go to this this game on the the 21st i'm it'd be, it'd be good i'm i'm going to the purdue game yep. which is at ross aid um the first game right now i'm planning to go to is the stanford game but yeah no it's it's um it is special. It's unique, and and I think if if you've never been there, you don't really know what you're looking for. I, I don't even know what that that experience would be like. The first time I went to campus was in 2001 in the summer for a football camp. Believe it or not, because I played high school football, and so I went there and whatnot. And I I just remember just like walking around like in the evening after practice or something, and just like, like I want to see campus and mm-hmm. just kind of whatever. And so. So that was really my first exposure of, of whatnot, you know. So, and I remember like yeah. knowing of the grotto, and then just kind of like going to look for it, and I I found it, which was cool. So, yeah, my favorite spot is definitely the grotto. Um, the last time I was up there, actually, the in 2010. Night. Yeah, yeah. Um, in 2010, I went up there, and my wife was fighting uh, lung cancer, or uh, liver cancer, and so I go up to the game, and I go to the grotto, I light a candle and set a prayer. And we won the game. Mind you, came back home. Three months later, she was cancer-free. That's brilliant. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's awesome, yep. man. And I took a picture of the candle and had as my backdrop on a, on my phone. So, yeah, it's a very special place. That's awesome. What game man. are you going to, Wookie? I'm going to the Stanford game this year. Oh, yeah. Yes, you know I'll be there. So Heck that's going to yeah. be a party. Oh, dude, we're going to party our asses off, man. <laughs> <laughs> we are excited. I'm, I'm taking an Uber up from uh, my friend's house. who's like 20 minutes away. So Nice. Yep. Do it. We, we have a stadium lot, and I think Fighting Irish, you're faithful. Joe, you're going to be there, right? Yeah, we're, we're in North Lot, though, so I could not get a uh, stadium. Damn, I could not get a stadium nor a Joyce lot pass. They were already sold out by the time my, uh, uh, my allotment uh, came to be, so... 
Well, dang. <laughs> it is what it is. All yep. right. Well, um, I think we're going to call it good there. You know, I don't think we have to get into the X's and O's. Um, we will do, of course, our Texas A&M breakdown show, uh, breaking down the Aggies. Um, I learned this week that they say gig em. Like, like, like Texas says hook them, you know, because they're mm-hmm. the Longhorns. They do say gig em. I'm yes. like, what the hell is gig em? And I was just they're like, like the sugar smack bear. Uh, the more I learn of Texas A and M, the more weird I get. I'm like, eh, <laughs> like, like, I don't know. Like Baylor at least is in Waco, and you know they've got uh, the Fixer Upper show. You know Joanna Gaines, right? You know going on. But, oh right, yeah, yeah, that's in Baylor. But like. <laughs> 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 but like Texas and M College Station, I'm just like, what? Like, which, in all fairness to that, I actually did want to go to that game. Like, I tried to get tickets, and I, like, obviously, I could go on like Ticketmaster or StubHub or something now and spend, you know, insane amounts of money. But it's like, eh, I would choose not to do that, <laughs> you know. Um, got to feed the children, so, um, buy them new shoes or something. Um, but yeah, I do I... want to add one more thing though before you close out. That is fuck Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I uh, love it. Yeah, it would not be a Wookiee presence on the show if he did not give an, uh, a rowdy F Michigan. So <laughs> I, I appreciate that greatly. Well, uh, I think since since Matt, you know, we, gosh, we could we could do all sorts of stuff. Um, we did the 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 fight song. I think what we'll this is what we'll do. We'll we'll go out with the alma mater because um, this is a little warmer per se show as far i mean i guess we could do some i don't know do you want do you want something a little more sentimental or something a little more rowdy going out though we tend Where to be want, oh, we did mention earlier uh rocky road to dublin we we're talking about that yeah Just we did that's that's sort of an irish thing and he wants here come the irish followed by dropkick murphy if that's what he wants <laughs> oh i second that yeah do i even have that i got do I even have that uh, that breakdown here? Shoot, oh, you got you know, it, Joe. Oh, I do. Hold on, it's gonna someone someone tell a funny story while I look for it. <laughs> Matt, hit Joe up for that ticket. I, I honestly, I I plan to as long That's as you a know. Funny I, story. If it if it's an hour <laughs> from you, <clears throat> no one's in sales. He'll tell your wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing like uh. You know, I live in the middle of BF nowhere, so everything is, you know, over an hour for me. So any any sort of traveling, you know, I'm going to be cleared for that. For me, as long as there's not some sacrament going on that weekend with some relative or a friend, then I, I should probably be in the clear. You know, All right, it's we- September 21st, <laughs> row 10, section 3, seat 3 is where you would be. You're oh, right on the visitor nice. tunnel. You can talk all the shit you want to the Miami <laughs> of Ohio players. You said you're in southern Indiana. Yeah, roughly. Not not real far south. I'm I'm like I'm probably I'm an hour from Indianapolis and an hour and five minutes from Cincinnati. Yeah. I'm in southern Indiana. Where you at? Where you at Rushville. Where at? Where did you say? Rushville. Rushville. Okay, I'm in Evansville. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Nolan, you you you're Nolan the go to. Practically Kentucky down there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'm although 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 the, Evansville and Jasper, that area is hardy hardcore Catholic. Oh yeah. I'm yeah. from I went to high school in Jasper. Brilliant. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's where I did my Knights of Columbus fourth degree was down in Jasper, but that's all that's all nice. other topic. So we did talk about the uh council fourteen seventy seven earlier. Um you know, it's funny you were talking about like if there's no sacrament or something going on on a Saturday. So like all throughout X, like last like three weeks, I've been seeing posts by people, and this traditionally with Dos Leprechauns, the group I'm asso- this show is associated with, where it's, you know, public service announcement: do not have a wedding, a funeral, <laughs> a birthday party on a Notre Dame football Saturday. If you do, and I decide to come, I will be wearing Notre Dame gear, and I will be watching the game on my phone simultaneously. You know, it's just like... like I will tailgate I will tailgate your wedding. Do not tempt me. Yeah, that's right. It's like, like you are bringing this upon yourself, you know, like, um, which is funny. Dom got married on a Notre Dame weekend. <laughs> against our rival usc i'm like are you out of your mm. mind and i turned to his dad and he's like oh it was it was rough you know <laughs> it's like i'm happy for I them bet. you know they got married but it's like what <laughs> that's the saturday you picked 
<laughs> these are excuses if you don't get it right which is funny um i was i was helping at a church on sunday and there was like an event that someone's like oh are you guys signing up to come to this thing and i'm like no that's on a, a saturday that notre dame was playing and, and 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 the lady was like well you should probably change that i'm like absolutely not and i got and i just walked away i was like offended i was like yeah. what <laughs> like get away from me oh yeah yeah my, my wife knows that's it been scheduled. Yeah. yeah it's okay she she's not a yeah. notre dame person so, you know, <laughs> my wife knows on on sundays that the Bengals are playing that that's a four hour window blocked off because that's, that's a right. half hour pre to like get ready and the half hour after to either celebrate or cry Oh, that's the way my wife. That's the way my wife is on Sundays. She's a huge Bengals fan. OK, and I'm a huge Bengal Notre Dame slash fan. So Saturdays are like big in my house and I work at seven now. So yeah. it's like, well, fuck, I can watch the game, but I just can't drink. And <laughs> me watching Oof, rough. A Notre Dame game sober. She is like in the bedroom with door closed in the TV off. <laughs> Into the bunker. <laughs> well, yep. Don't you just take calls? Don't you just take calls and close tickets for IT? Yeah, I'm a uh, I'm uh, uh, he he help you desk that. engineer. He the American economy no, going he, at he this can, point. He can oh, drink. Sorry, he can no. drink. <laughs> you can drink no. before that. I, I don't drink. Enough. I don't drink, but I do toke weed. When I was <laughs> <in the show. laughs> You're always choking. I'm getting high as fuck watching the game and making <laughs> calls. Maybe you had yeah. to with Brian Kelly as our coach. You know, I don't know. But oh, dude, my my wife just yelled, "Fuck Brian Kelly!" <laughs> 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 and then you bring him up. Oh, uh, you know this language. I know. I don't. You know, Mrs. TV Joe loves <laughs> loves the Notre Dame games. Days. There's nothing else that goes on. M- Mrs. Jimmy Joe. <laughs> oh yeah, nice. oh, yeah. one team man. <laughs> oh, and you know, and you know what? I'm going to learn the uh, what is it, alma mater for the uh, for the Fighting Irish on my accordion, and I'll play that for you sometime. <laughs> if, okay? if anyone missed it earlier, uh, the guys who are live now, uh, this will be on the podcast. Probably one of the greatest things ever. Uh, Jimmy Joe was playing the fight song on the accordion. I, Jimmy I, I'm Joe, learning you better. It. it was not you as perfect as it. it could be. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine if Jimmy Joe showed up at a tailgate with the accordion playing the fight song? That would be amazing if we could get it first. The stage. biggest rock <laughs> star like ever. Jimmy Joe to lead the players walk, to be honest with oh, you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> bagpipes and accordions. Bring it on. <laughs> oh, oh you, know, you know, and I think we have a fan, a new fan, a new member of the family here. Not only French, but also Irish. Oh, welcome. You're going to love Notre Dame. You have won a ticket before <laughs> the game. You are going to have a good time. Hey, right. Joe. What's you up? haven't told us if Matt's on Twitter. He can is. Can we follow he Matt? Is. Matt? Yeah, what, yeah. Well, give us his app so we can follow him. Is yeah, let me, he, he let me probably won't, check it. He probably won't jump on. Yeah, I, I know. It's like at the something. Yeah podcast just something. I, I no so I, I think I just it's the 189 project let me see if this comes up I don't I've never actually really used this on at the 189 oh I hit a space that's not gonna work oh there it is yeah at the 189 I got project Matthew right. with a skull and a flag yep that's me yeah. Yep. All right. Looks follow, like I'm going to I'm gonna start doing some Notre Dame posting, huh? Hey, uh, uh, I, Matt, Matt and I have followed each other for a while when I, when I found out he was on X and our, our small community of friends and it was just like, oh, OK, you know, so, yeah. and then we got to talking about football and stuff. So but then but then again, you you, you seemed interested and open minded. And I was like, wait, he doesn't know anything about Notre Dame. This is we'll get, we'll get him. This is I've amazing. Been doing it. I've been... So, I've been indoctrinating my nephew for the last three years, and now he's walking around repping Irish gear. So. <laughs> there you go. Start, <laughs> start, start him young. That's what I say. Huh. I mean, you know, I we have football on TV, and Christopher just immediately says "Go Irish." He has no <laughs> idea who's playing. He just says "Go Irish." Oh yeah, and that's like that's so. my daughter with the Bengals. When it's football season, she'll come in there and she'll be like, "Who are we playing? Who's nice. who's the other team?" Yeah. Are we winning? <laughs> Why aren't we winning? She hates the Steelers. You know. Oh yeah, yeah she hates the Steelers. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes during the season, if like during like a bye week, uh, she'll ask me to watch clips. 
Do you want me to put clips up so we can watch something? Oh, fine, fine. I'm like, no, honey, it's a free weekend. We can go do whatever we, we want. She's like, I want to watch football clips. I want to watch football with you, daddy. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right, I think I think you. We, so we did find the track. I do have it here. We're gonna we're gonna end with right, Kathy yeah. Richardson and the Dropkick Murphys. Thank you everyone for joining us. This is Fighting Irish Faithful Show. Uh, thank you so much, and and Matt. Hopefully, uh, we've we've planted the seed and given it a shit ton of water and nitrogen to germinate into something great. We've done something. Go, else. Matt. Go. go, go, go. <laughs>